Hi everyone, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk QI. And this week's viewer recommendation is another one from the early series, pre-XL. We are going to series E, episode two this week. And I know almost nothing about this one. I see from the thumbnail that it's got a rich, uh, rich halls in it. Um, it's called Electricity. Whatever happened to Rich Hall? He seemed to be such a mainstay of the early series of this show. Did did he get cancelled, or has he? did he leave the UK, or... Help me out here. Let me know what happened to Rich Hall. Because I, you certainly don't see him in the recent series. Did he die? Or, I don't know. He seems like he's in every other episode of, of the early years, in any case. Other than that, not sure why this one's been recommended to me. I rarely am, so I'm going in cold. It'll be a quick episode, so let's jump into it. Episode 2 of Series E, Electricity. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to QI for another reckless Fat stack of, of the cards. screwdriver into the fuse box of the unknown. The slightly shocking Sean Locke. Oh, yeah. sweet. It's always bittersweet seeing Sean, but it's good Rich to see him. Hall. Hey, Rich. The positively electromagnetic Joe Brand. Nice. Okay. And the wiry young shaver socket, Alan Davis. Rich goes. Ha 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 He's alive! <laughs> and Alan goes. <laughs> Okay, that, that's a fun buzzer gag. I like that. Each edition in the E series encloses an elephant, right? Oh, the first to spot it by me. waving your elephant card will win our generous elephant in the room bonus. <laughs> like so. So one of these clues has to do with elephants. Anyway, the atmosphere is already absolutely um, electric. Electric. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, they put a klaxon on that? That's awesome. Question one, I think. I'm naked. It's, it's, <laughs> it's pouring with rain. Can you give me a good reason why I should crouch down with my bottom in the air? Stephen, I wouldn't have thought you'd need a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you least likely to get hit by lightning? I'm just picturing that image. Yes. One of the most erotic I've ever... <laughs> I think it'd make a great Athena poster. <laughs> I think it's because your bottom is the least likely part of you to be struck by lightning. You're sort of in the right, I'm right going area. The, I'm going yeah. with the electric thing. Apparently it's a very good stance to adopt if you're caught in a lightning storm. Or can help. you just drop your trousers and moon? <laughs> what should you not do? Hold a 40-foot metal pole. <laughs> and come on! What is the problem with being under a tree? Why, why is that bad? Because they're more likely to be struck by lightning. And what they? happens when they are? There's a big flash, a lot of flame. I saw yeah, it. well, the sap boils in an instantaneous way and the tree explodes. The best thing to do would be to get into a car. Really? Yeah. And drive away from the rain. <laughs> well, well, cars are grounded. Rubber tires. You are actually <laughs> six times more likely to be struck if you're a man. The man always has to hold the <laughs> umbrella because if the woman holds the umbrella, it keeps jabbing the man in the arm. <laughs> Is it because yeah. women wear more rubber than men? <laughs> is, is it men just deserve to be punished more? Not really my area. The, the, the... <laughs> wire... Do you have wire in bras? Do you? I mean, does one? How they do need... you fall into that category? <laughs> You're well, doing badly, I have to say. You're a very... Thank you, yes, a lot of... ...fulsome pair of fun bags there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... You know what? That was almost heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. No. I'd like to hear you whisper that when you're bent over <laughs> naked in the rain. The, the, the wire won't attract the lightning, but it will superheat when you're struck. You so can you burn yourself. blow up? Yeah. How exciting. I'm going to have a go. Yeah. <laughs> but the quite interesting thing is how often does lightning strike the Earth on an average day? Four. Oh, no, no. Like so thousands of times a minute. I can say that worldwide. it's more than four. <laughs> is it five? How could you... <laughs> It's 17 million times a day. No. No. Way. It means about 200 times a second. Why okay. can't we harness that power? What? <laughs> How many people in Britain do you imagine are killed each year by lightning strikes? Tw 12. None. 30. Two. Four. 
It's between three and six, actually. It's not very many. It's Four or five. <laughs> there was one American. Seven times he was struck. Uh, he, he was a park ranger at the Shenandoah National Park. I know that guy. Do you know how he died? He was very testy. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Roy Sullivan. He actually... Uh, That's he not what they called him, though. No. We were about reading about this guy in the Guinness Book of World Records when I was a kid. Now, I have a conundrum for you. Can horses catch eels? It's a rather attractive horse, actually, isn't it? Yeah. A very beautiful horse, yes. Not a you bad looking eel, either. Eel. I love eel. <laughs> Sexy eel. There's more you can do with the eel, possibly, but mm. the, um, the horse oh, is. There oh, oh. so genuinely is a very attractive horse. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nice hair. <laughs> Stephen, calm down. Can horses catch eels? That's the question. I, I think they can. And how would they go about it? A net. <laughs> well, was it an electric eel? It was, because okay. that's our... Because that's the episode. Day. So I'm afraid the horses were sent into the water where the electric eels would go crazy and discharge all their electricity until their batteries were flat. So it was rather mean. I feel like you could use less valuable bait. I feel like... I wouldn't do it to that nice, pretty one, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Because they're not actually eels, oddly enough. They're a sort of knife fish. 69 species there are of electric fish, including the torpedo fish. Comes from the Latin torpore, meaning to numb. It was used as an anaesthetic by the Romans. And oh, from that... Like a torpor. The underwater missile was named. In 1903, Thomas Alva Edison released a movie whose title consisted of three words, two of which begin with E. What was it? Oh, this is the elephant in the room. I know, we've nearly forgotten them, but oh. there it is. Oh, elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he killed an elephant with alternating current. He made a film in which an elephant <laughs> Yeah, he was to, like, just credit Tesla, wasn't it? Ten points. Oh, ten points. He believed that his direct current was safe and wouldn't hurt people and didn't electrocute. He wanted to destroy the reputation of alternating current, which was owned by Westinghouse. And this elephant, Topsy, was sentenced to death on Coney Island because Topsy had killed three human beings and was going to be hanged or was going to be poisoned. What was going to happen to Topsy? Hanging. It's a hell of a gallows. And he filmed it as, as a PR film. Yeah, it's like a snuff people. film. A snuff film, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he gave it 460 grams of cyanide of potassium in carrots. That would do it first, wouldn't it? She died without a trumpet or a groan, apparently. And he filmed the event, trying to persuade people to refer to electrocution as being Westinghoused. The first murder on Topsy's hands was killing a trainer who, frankly, deserved to die because this trainer gave uh, a lit cigarette to eat. He <laughs> killed him. Yeah. What? <laughs> Quite right, yeah. <laughs> Do you know that some elephants are evolving now that don't have tusks? The ones with tusks get poached, right, get shot. So the, the ones that with smaller tusks, of the small tusk gene, lives on more frequently. And eventually elephants are going, and there's elephants being born now that don't grow tusks. <laughs> and there's, like some, there's some tigers now that have been made of Axminster. <laughs> 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 Can't trust anything Sean Locke says. How fast do the electrons? I'm assuming Axe Mister's like an electric some wire. kind of like carpet or something. But tell me exactly. Oh, oh dear, they're really fast. It's very, 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 very fast. But also, <laughs> I would say they're actually probably like sort of 30, 40 miles an hour. Something deceptively slow. I would have said it's a bit of a crap question, really. Why is that? Well, because modern physicists see electrons as something you would call probability density functions. That is an absolutely precise description of what quantum physics does call an electron. And I'm in Joe Brand's kind of blown my mind this second. Five points for that, if not ten. <laughs> but they do travel along electrical wires, 0.03 miles per hour. Snail's pace along the wire. You have to think of, of waves. If you had a tube full of marbles, you, you push the marble in one end, another marble come out the other end almost instantaneously. But the marbles inside are travelling very, very slowly. It's the wave front that moves very, very fast. Speed of the snail. Work, Each you get one. Ten snails together if you push the end snail. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try the other one dressing them later. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely... What is the most interesting thing you can do with the objects on the trays beneath your desks? Oh we have. Pickle? Tell the boys and girls what you mash? have. I have a lasagna. You have a lasagna. A gherkin. I've got a bit of a cable. 
You can heat it up. You can heat the gherkin. You can heat the lasagna. You can use the gherkin as a battery to heat the lasagna. Can't can you generate a current from acidic fruit and veg? It's, a, it's some kind of uh, gherkins because they're pickled. And then I don't know anything. <laughs> but the gherkin will behave as a light bulb. If you put a charge through a gherkin, it will glow. The lasagna can provide the power. Because it's salty, oh. and salt is an electrolyte... The lasagna provides the power? And you can see a lit gherkin. This is one of our elves, just the other day. <laughs> wow, isn't that great? It's like it, kids' TV in the 70s, isn't is it? Is it yeah. lit or is it just burning? Unfortunately, you would need a lasagna the size of the floor plan of the gherkin building. I'm having one of those when I get home Which is about... <laughs> I'm cycling home tonight. I shouldn't put a lasagna on the crossbar. <laughs> <laughs> the lasagna pod. <laughs> I mean, obviously, be sensible and uh, don't do anything because I tell you to or tell you not to. Um, live your own lives. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Shag horses. Yeah. 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 What is the difference between a ship and a boat? Has a ship got curtains? <laughs> Ships are bigger. Oh! They are bigger. Ships have lifeboats. Boats don't have lifeboats. They are already a boat. We're talking Navy here. We're talking Navy. In the Navy, a ship is any vessel which is... Named. Surface. I.e. ships, frigates, destroyers, anything like that. Except little dinghies and lifeboats, which are boats, I grant you. A boat is a but submarine. A, a boat is a submarine. Okay, so that's a very that's a misleading question because you're 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 using a strict navy definition, because Alan's completely right in a more generic naval sense. What about like on the surface. A rowing boat is that a ship? No, it's a <laughs> boat. In the navy, but there's not a vessel of the line. Is it a rowing ship then? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the navy. Yes, it is. That's complete bollocks. Yeah. No. I. I I fail to agree. Yeah. No, it's bullshit. That's right. I'll tell you something else. There's not two moons. A ship. <laughs> In German, there's das Schiff and there's das Boot. I don't know which das is which. Das Boot. It's spelled with two O's, but pronounced both. But no, it isn't. It's, it's, it's pronounced Boot. It's not pronounced Boot. Yes, unless it you're is. from Newcastle. <laughs> Do you know where jump house is? Jump house. Jump house is a... Yeah. Slang term for a brothel term. The now. modern German. <laughs> and as soon as I yeah. said it, I immediately knew it. You knew. Like, yeah. There's something so camp about modern German, though. You know they, you know what they call a mobile phone? Mein Handy. <laughs> oh, what's mein Handy? Had mein Handy for long. Oh, that's my. Are you hosting the Baptist this year? Uh, I did not know. No. Oh, it's a shame because I was going to say you should do it in that voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm welcome to the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> In the true English, you could call it a ship or a boat, and who could say ye nay? But that was the nature of our question, and a foolish one it was. As well as yes, inventing it was. the battery, Alessandro Volta also discovered methane. Which animal contributes most methane to the atmosphere? Don't say yes. cows. Cow. Oh! Yeah, no. Blue whales. Ants. No! Termites is the right answer. Alan, very smart man. Well, I thought he was going to go blue whale there for a minute. Danny, let it slip. <laughs> Where's your career going? <laughs> <laughs> this is my career. Man. All down here. Yeah, so I just say I was there. Heading I towards Zed, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't we feed them on something like a clear soup? <laughs> You could never make that many little termite bowls. You, yeah, you could. <laughs> they don't fart it, they burp it, oddly enough. So if you went around with a I mean, lighter, they went... <laughs> <laughs> Does you agree, yes? Maybe that's where the dragon myth came from. <laughs> Very good. <gasps> How did you two end up having a dinner with the producer? So, 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 so St. George uh, just killed the cat. You weren't invited. Your lunch. Were you not invited? No. I wasn't you want to see what I've got? <laughs> <laughs> Take out lasagna. Termites have suicide bombers. Um, when predators approach, they explode and produce a sticky mess which glues the place up, prevents ants from attacking them. Now, why do thousands of Americans... Call we need a further explanation of the suicide bomber termites. Because they haven't got any friends. <laughs> they, get, they get a touch tone phone and go, 911, 911, 6432. <laughs> 
Is it because they eat so much that their fingers chub up and they get all the... <laughs> Electrical all fires. Calls with. Suppose somebody gave you a, a mobile phone. I'm handy. I'm handy. For Weihnacht. Phone up the emergency service just to see if it's worked. Because you can't call anybody else up because you haven't got a network yet. All phones in America, whether they've got a SIM card in them or not, work for 911. Have to, by law, be able to call 911, the emergency service. Does that annoy the emergency I would imagine it drives them out. <laughs> Why wouldn't a Russian family call their son power station or industrialization? Well, they're not names, are they? <laughs> they're not names. They are. Dynamo. They are. Well, yeah. They are names. <laughs> because, they're they're girls names. Names. because they're girls' names because is the right answer. Name. But this is actually a is anyone tradition in, in the, the Russic area, if you like, in Ukraine. Named their names like Noibie Batko, don't kill me, father. Oh. <laughs> but before we close, Stephen, the horse is actually here. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ten points oh, is enough. Joe Brown. I'm genuinely impressed by Joe's knowledge of quantum place, mechanics. So well deserved. In third place with minus 12 points, it's Sean Locke. Thank you. Finally, with minus 21 points, is Alan Davis. <laughs> Good night. Uh, that's probably the combined cast with the shortest names ever on the show. Sean Locke. Combined eight letters, Rich Hall the same, Joe Brand only seven, Alan Davies is the longest with just ten. I can appreciate a good short name, says Neil. The, the, that boat question, the boat versus ship question is really bugging me because it, the way it was phrased had nothing to do with the Navy. And the Navy's designations, the British Navies in particular, have nothing to do with more conventional maritime conventions and I come from a nautical family and so that kind of offends me um, my father in particular would have a great deal to say on the subject um, but it is primarily a function of size but also function ships tend to travel farther which is a matter of size to some degree but but there are big work boats which don't go far and some boats do go far. it's nebulous but his description, where it's only submarines versus surface ships, total hogwash. In naval terms, sure, maybe, but... Okay, I'm going to put it aside. I could, I could rant on that one for a while. I'm trying to... I, I feel like in these early seasons, Stevens much more camp than he tended to be in, the, in his later series... Um, but I might just sort of be misremembering, or maybe I'm just being recommended a bunch of particularly camp episodes. But but we leaned into it rather heavily in this episode with the how not to get struck by lightning, sticking your, your manhole up in the air. He was really taken with that beautiful horse. We, we, we revisited the voiced mine handy line multiple times. A um, lot of fun stuff. But I just don't remember him being so camp in later series. But I may just be misremembering. Maybe I've just seen a, the, 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 the number of Steven episodes I've seen lately tend to be from the earlier seasons, and they all happen to be quite camp. Anyhow, how often does Steven host the BAFTAs? It sounds like it's a fairly regular thing if Alan's asking, are you doing it this year? Has he ever broken out the German accent at the BAFTAs? kind of curious. Sean Locke's a funny dude. It, it, it's weird because I, I only discovered him just as he passed. And so um, every time I see him, I'm, I'm sort of connected with, with, with his death. Um, and so there's always a sort of weird nostalgia as the more I learn about him, the more I see him, the more um, I'm reminded that there's a finite amount of his content out there and there's not going to be any more and th this is this is his legacy and man it's a funny legacy i i i really like his style but he's the least trustworthy person on this show you know he comes at he's a, he's a very good liar for anyone who's seen carrot in a box we know that he's so good at misleading people 
the man's very good at stating something like it's a fact. And then he gives you just enough at the end to make you question everything that he's just said. The elephants evolving shorter tusks. It's a totally plausible theory. I have no idea whether it's true or not, because he immediately followed it up with um, tigers evolving a different skin. I, I, I forget the name because it was a weird place name type product, but I assume it's some kind of like floor covering. A lot of questions from this episode. Help me out. I, I, my 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 general British knowledge has certainly expanded in, since I started the channel, but but there are still gaps in my knowledge which I need help with from 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 those of you in the UK or those of you who just know more than me. Which let's be frank, quite a lot of you. In any case, another fun episode. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for a little bit here today on Neil Talks. As always, I appreciate your comments and everything else you can do to help the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoy what you're seeing here. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. See you soon. Cheers.